Oh, how were these conflicts about politics just as much as religion? Okay, so that, that is a key thing I want to get across. The name Wars of Religion is not completely accurate in describing what these conflicts are about. There's also the political component. And the political component is what? Kings versus nobles. Okay, the whole first half of this course, right up to the French Revolution, where the king, Louis XVI, wants to tax the nobles more, and the nobles say, no, you cannot do that, we're nobles. The whole first part of this course is witnessing this political tension between kings and nobles. <laughs> After the French Revolution, they realize that they've got bigger challenges, right? These liberals, these crazy people that want democracy and Republicans, you know, that want everyone to be able to participate in government. These liberals that want to, you know, allow, uh, you know, the, their educated uh, children to, uh, you know, get all these government jobs where people are qualified for things based on merit and not on, not on their noble birth. You know, after the French Revolution, all these crazy ideas make the nobles and kings all, all of a sudden become allies in a, in a common cause that we refer to as conservatism in the 19th century. But before that, they're rivals for the whole first half of this course. So what is the rivalry? Uh, well, in Spain and England, uh, there is tensions also in these countries uh, too. Uh, in Spain, there is Philip II, a very Catholic king, and he controls... Spain as well as the New World, and so Spain, as a result of the wealth of the New World, is one of the richest countries and most powerful countries in Europe. Now, Spain also controls the very prosperous low countries, or Netherlands, but what we see in the Netherlands is many people there uh, are rejecting Catholicism and reforming their church, the, what we call Dutch Calvinist churches, or these Dutch Reformed churches, are being made. And including uh, amongst these Reformers, these people that are joining Calvinism, are the landed elites of the Netherlands, the nobles of the Netherlands. And so we've got tensions here between the king of Spain, who controls this area nominally, who technically controls this area, who says Spain is Catholic, these areas are Catholic, and the nobles of this area that are saying, no, we have the right to choose our own religion. And so we reject your religion, Philip, and we are choosing this one. This Calvinism, exactly. And so, um, so the, the tensions in the Netherlands... Uh, see, not only a religious tension, right, there's the Dutch Calvinists against the Spanish Catholics, but we also see that political tension. We've got nobles that are want resisting the Spanish king. Now, William of Orange is the leader of these Protestant nobles, these Calvinist no nobles, and uh, the Union of Utrecht is the union of the seven, I believe, the seven northern provinces that all agree to join together to fight against Spanish rule. The Duke of Parma is sent in uh, by the king, and the Duke of Parma uh, helps join the southern parts of the Netherlands together. And so the southern part of the Netherlands will remain largely Catholic and will remain under the control of Spain. So what we see happen is the Netherlands divides, the north becomes more or less independent, even though wars keep going on and off all the way till 1648, when finally in the Treaty of West, uh, Westphalia, the, um, the independence of the Dutch Republic is confirmed permanently. Uh, but in addition to the north being independent, the south will remain part of Spain. The north will be Protestant. The south will be Catholic. Okay, and so that will be uh, the religious wars there. Now, as part of this, the English who are under Elizabeth, the English who are 
Protestant are going to be aiding the Protestants in the Netherlands. And so Philip II, the Catholic king of Spain, obviously doesn't like this because this is another foreign monarch aiding a rebellion against his rule in his territory. And so he's quite angry with Elizabeth. And Philip II also was married, of course, to Mary I, the Catholic Queen of England before Elizabeth. And when she died, Philip wanted to be married to Elizabeth as well, but she rejected him. And uh, part of the reason is because she wants, she does not want England to be Catholic. And so Philip II is not a fan of Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is working to subvert uh, Philip's rule. And remember, and if you look at a map, you'll understand why Elizabeth wants to have the Spanish out of the Netherlands. The Netherlands are right across the English Channel from England. From the Netherlands, you could launch an attack, an invasion on England. And so therefore, if the Spanish are kicked out of the Netherlands, that would be good for English security. And so she's aiding this because not only do they have a religious similarity, they're both Protestants fighting against the Catholic Spanish, but there's also a geopolitical interest that Elizabeth has as well. She wants to have the Netherlands be this weak or an independent country, independent from uh, Spain. So, the result of the Armada, uh, so Elizabeth is aiding the northern provinces, the Protestants there, so Philip doesn't like this. Philip sends the Spanish Armada, this big, the largest navy in Europe, up to attack the uh, English. Now, the Spanish Armada had had success against the Turks uh, in the Mediterranean, and so we know they are a strong army. I think the battle there is the Battle of Lepito, or something like the L-E-P-A-T-O, I'm not, I forget the exact name. Uh, but, uh, but, um, but now the English are the next target, and so he sends his Spanish Armada up against the English to drive out Elizabeth and replace, you know, and re-Catholicize England, the scourge in, you know, in Catholic Europe the supporter of Protestants, you know, Protestant rebellions in his Catholic kingdom. And so remove them. And as you know, the Armada is defeated. And there's a couple reasons, right? For one, the Armada has all sorts of different languages and uh, being spoken uh, by the different, uh, by the different uh, ships because uh, because Philip controls all these different regions, and so there's Italian speakers and Spanish speakers and Portuguese speakers, all these different uh, languages being spoken. Um, so there's bad communication. Secondly, the ships are large and not as agile as the English ships. And the ships are not used to choppy northern waters. The sea in the, Mediter the Mediterranean, surrounded by continents on all sides, is smooth, and the ocean up by England is much more choppy, and therefore the ships are not able to maneuver as well. And in addition, um, the weather. The Spanish are used to warm weather. The English are playing home field advantage here. They're used to the cold weather. The weather also is problematic. And this is quite obvious when the Spanish uh, are blown northward by this grand storm that's known as the Protestant wind because the Spanish Armada is blown all the way up into the North Sea and they have to go all the way around England and half the ships crash onto the shore, the North Shores of Scotland and you know they're just left there and many, you know, all these Spanish troops die and so that is uh, the destruction of the Armada which has huge implications. 